This video is brought to you by Sailing World and SailingWorld.com. In a spring issue of Sailing World magazine, we'll run an exclusive interview with Oracle Racing skipper James Spithill. I started the process of gathering the material for that feature today in San Diego. But before I delved into the deeper questions about his life, his development as a sailor, and his future, I asked the youngest skipper ever to win in the America's Cup for some perspective to accompany an onboard video I shot a day earlier from the guest racer position on Spithill's AC-45. Here's what he had to say. You need to be consistent. And that's, that's, that's really been the big lesson here. Um, I mean, if you look at the... And at the end of the day, the results do the talking, you know, and what they've shown is consistency is the key. I mean, um, you'd have to say that the Kiwis are the team to beat. The reason is they've been the most consistent. I mean, we've both won, I think, the same amount of regattas. They've won, they won the fleet racing in Qashqai, and then they won the match racing in uh, Plymouth. We won the match racing in Qashqai, and then we won the fleet racing in Plymouth. However, on the other end, they've had a second usually, you know, a second or a third, where we didn't have a good match racing series in Plymouth. And I think we had a third in the fleet racing in, in uh, Qashqai. So, yeah, back to the original answer, consistency is the key. Well, I think the whole time you're just trying to go as fast as you can. And these boats are really rewarding. You really have to have guys that can be all around sailors, you know, thinking ahead and um, doing a variety of roles. And from what we learnt doing the Extreme 40 circuit, you know, and Team New Zealand and Artemis and all the other guys have learnt that, is that the helmsman is actually involved a lot more in the tactics because the tactician gets dragged into the boat handling a lot of the time. So it's difficult for him to, at times to either, one, see, because in the light area he needs to be further forwards, just to keep the boat going, because the multi-holes, as soon as you, you know, if you're just, if you're dragging the, you know, the sterns, if the bow's out of the water, they're just slow. So you need to get everyone as far forward as possible. So there's a little compromise there, but at the end of the day, we're doing everything we can to be fast around the race course. You know, and Team New Zealand's the same. So it has gone away a little bit from having the luxury of having a sort of dedicated tactician. Well, now it's more a bit of a balance, you know, from the helmsman to the to someone like John or I think Ray Davies does it for Dean. You know, something we've been working hard on is trying to be. Um, uh, what's the word? It's basically when, you, when you're under pressure, you know, if you break a start or you're in a tough situation, doing it, you know, trying to be smart, damage control, you know, not just throw, not just rolling the dice, you know, one banging the corner if you lose a start and trying to get it. It's trying to just pick away smart, you know, really sort of trying to limit that damage control and then waiting for an opportunity to present itself and not trying to make things happen. It may not come, but I think if you... If, you know, if you just try and wing it out to one side, you know, straight after the start, well, that could end it. Where if you just chip away, chip away, there probably be, will be a couple of opportunities out there. And if there isn't, well, maybe in the last leg, that's the time to wing it out there. Um, and the guys who have done that are probably Team New Zealand have done that pretty well. Um, I thought we did a pretty good job of that this regatta. I thought uh, Chris Draper did a really good job in Plymouth for that. Pretty much never won a start. You know, and all of the match racing was behind in every start, but just was cool, you know, just stayed behind and waited for an opportunity. Won a lot of races like that. It is, it is a lot like a whole shot in motocross. It's, uh, well, the first thing is knowing the fastest angle of the boat. So, you know, between that start line, there's a certain spot on the start line where on the polar, you're going to be at your fastest, you know, performance angle. From it varies on wind speed, the yeah, and, and the position of where the pin is. Yeah. Then the next thing is, is how's the line set? You know, is the pin physically closer? There'll be an area on the line that is just physically a shorter distance to the reach mark. But you need to balance both of those two up. And then, obviously, the third thing is all the other boats around you. You know, where are they and, and how do you get around that? So it makes it interesting and it makes it... Um, what we found earlier on when we did the conventional start was that we come off the line, everyone would be high and slow trying to pinch each other off, and it was just boring. You know, and there wasn't a whole lot to it. And where this way, everyone has a shot at it. Um, you still got to do all the good things right, but it's just full action from from the get go. And uh, and the other cool thing is you're straight into the downwind, so there's some great opportunities there as well. The biggest gains and losses are at the gate. There's no question. And because the boats, you get, you really pay a huge penalty for missing a lay line. And a lot of times you'll see guys come fully wicked up in there go around the mark and they're gone. You see other guys come in, you know, a little underdone, and there'll be two holes in the water, 
and it's just a huge penalty. So there's some big games to be made there. Someone will get it wrong, that's a guarantee. Um, we all do it. So there's just a lot of opportunities out there, and it makes the decisions a lot harder. You know, compared to a monohull, like you usually, if you miss the line a little bit, no problem, you know, like pull the brace back or just soak it in a little bit more, and you'll be fine. In this boat, you just, if that hull's not out, it's a massive performance loss. So.